What's going on, Darkwing community? Your boy Will is back. I'm your host from the St. Canard Files, and my co-host is... I'm Mike Russo, and this episode is depressing the heck out of Launchpad. <laughs> I actually like LP in this episode, Mike, man. I really do. I do, too. Okay, man. Everything's going all right with you, man? Yeah, everything's fine. Um, But more importantly, I want to know, how was Pensacon? Oh, man. Pensacon was a blast, man. Uh, My boy Joe went all out. Uh, I know his wife don't listen to the podcast, so Joe, you're good. <laughs> um, Joe went, I think he said he got 41 Mickey Mouse autographs by uh, Brett I- Iwin. What's his name? I don't know how to pronounce his last no, name. I'm not sure either. Were those autographs free or did he pay for all? Oh, uh, he, pay, he <laughs> paid for all of them. But because his agent is Neri Lemus, which is the same agent as uh, Terry McGovern and Katie Lee, um, I I was talking to Neri and I purposely walked Neri right to Joe and say, oh, by the way, Neri, this is my friend Joe. He has a lot of autographs. Uh, he wanted to ask you something, and then I kind of walked away. So I set Neri up. And, oh, okay. Know, yeah. So, so Neri, did he yeah, get a bulk discount? He did get a discount. <laughs> um, it, to, I think it was a fair discount, a really good discount. But he still he he still came out of the pocket for all of them, man. Yikes! Because I've yeah. seen how many he got signed. That yeah. is crazy. Yeah, uh, Ashley uh, Eckstein, I believe that's how you pronounce her name. Uh, she's the voice of uh, ah- Ahsoka on the Star Wars Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. Right. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I got her autograph. Ooh, she's pretty expensive, but I she was her line was pretty long. Uh, she charges a hundred for an autograph up there, man. Oh yikes! But yeah, I've seen I've seen higher. I mean, um, uh, David Tennant's been signing things for Galaxy Con, and he wants like one fifty for an autograph. Wow, man! I considered it until I saw how much he was charging, and I said, you know, I noped out of there pretty quick. Yeah, uh, they had a Star Wars room. It was kind of mixed. It was like people from the original series, people from the prequel, Mandalorian, um. It, it was like just all mixture. It was just a whole Star Wars room. So like, uh, I don't know if you ever been to a con, Mike, where uh, I think they call themselves the Five O First. Yeah. Like, oh yes, I, yeah. I know that. Yeah. Yeah, they were there and they had their cosplayers just walking around the room, assisting people if they needed help or asking questions like, "Who did he voice?" or "What was he in Star Wars?" But you know, most of those Star Wars guru know that stuff. But you know, you got the yeah. people like me who like Star Wars, but. I, I don't know the name of every planet, the name of every ship. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, so I do need some help, you know? <laughs> yeah, I went to a Star Wars con about 15 years ago, and I had dinner with some of those guys. Oh, man, that's awesome, man. Uh, my favorite autograph that I got for Star Wars was uh, Emily Swallow. Uh, she's the voice of the armorer in um, The Mandalorian. Well, not the voice. She's the actress in the suit or, you know, as the armorer. See, um, I've I've only gotten one star wars autograph in my life and it wasn't even for me it was for a friend of mine Mm -hmm. um i had seen the red carpet premiere of episode three in new york city with a friend and as we were leaving it we ran to frank oz oh i'm i'm like i'm jealous (laughs) who plays yoda so i got i got the autograph for my friend who was a big yoda fan thinking think now thinking back i should have gotten one for me but he was swamped with people Okay. Well, another thing is cool was um while Joe was getting his forty something autographs that took like thirty minutes to an hour to get done, <laughs> uh for Mickey, he asked me to go to Karen Ashley. Uh, I believe she's one of the Yellow Rangers from Power Rangers. Oh, I would. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he, and he had five Funko Pops that he wanted her to sign. So I was in her line, and uh, well, I got there earlier because you know I had the media pass, so I was able to get in there early. Uh, so she had no line and she was still setting up and I said, Hey, Ashley, take your time. You know, I'm here, you know, get these uh, autographs for my friend. He's in a longer line with Mickey mouse. And she was like, Oh, okay. And she was like, but I, I don't mind signing them. And she was talking to me and I told her, I was like, Hey, Karen, I know nothing about power Rangers. Absolutely nothing. Never seen it. Don't know anything about it. 
So I was like, I'm just here doing him a solid. And she was like, oh, well, how come you didn't get into Power Rangers and stuff? I said, well, when it came out, I was already in eighth grade. Sports yeah. girls were priority. It wasn't cool to watch Power Rangers and my peers. And, you know, she, she understood. And she was just talking. She was like, well, you know, give it a chance. And I was like, yeah, maybe I'll give it a chance one day. And um, she gave me two free tickets to Ranger Stop. Um, nice. Yeah, I guess it's a con in Atlanta. Because she did ask me where I live. And... I told her I only live one hour away from Atlanta. So she was like, well, hey, come check it out. It's going to be a lot of Power Rangers, a lot of anime. Uh, and I said, freeze my favorite price. So why wouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> so Maybe I'm gone. thinking of the wrong show, but uh, but was a little girl from Godzilla vs. Kong there? Yeah, she was there. She was next to, uh, she was across from uh, Mickey and uh, Ahsoka, uh, Ashley Eckstein. She was only... right across. I only heard she was there after the con was over. I would have asked you to get something for me, but I had no idea she was even there. Yeah, she. Uh, I, I saw she had a, a lot of the Funko Pops. It was like a ten foot Funko Pop of of, of Kong. Oh wow! Yeah, ten and foot it's, or ten inch? Oh, ten inch. I'm sorry. I was gonna I'm, say I'm, I've I'm never think... heard of a ten foot Funko Pop. Could yeah. you imagine, Will? Yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking of basketball ten foot ring because I was watching the Knicks today. Uh, but you know what? Let's drag this conversation back to Darkwing Duck because oh, you got yeah. something really, really cool while you were there, didn't you? Yeah, man. I think I got a – I would consider it a grail. I don't think it's the top grail of a, for a Darkwing collection. Before but... you say what you got, what do you consider the top grail? <sighs> for me? I Did I put you on a spot? <laughs> yeah, you put me on a spot, man. Uh I would say definitely dangerous is kind of a grail for me, man. And uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I think it's up there. But you know, the the thing is, when you talk in prices, this this bad boy can't mess with it. Um, and there's a few Darkwing pins I think are a grail for me too, Mike. That I really, really want. There's one with Darkwing and LP, and I hardly ever see it go up on eBay and stuff. And when Which I one see is it, that? Ah, uh, it's like a limited edition one. It's not the one in the Rat Catcher, right? When they're the Disney yeah, World one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, think I got that one. Yeah, I have you, that one. Yeah. I, I see that one go for like two to like five hundred dollars, man. Oh no way, really? Yeah, it, it's a it's an expensive one. Um, I, I want that one, and then I see another one. It's like a Disney Afternoon pin set, and it has all the villains like Megavolt, Taurus Boba. Um, I've seen those go for like twenty bucks sometimes, but sometimes I see it for like the whole set. People be wanting two, three hundred dollars. Oh wow. Yeah, See, my holy grails are production art. I'd love to own like a drawing or an animation cell from the actual show. Um, that's my grail. But tell everybody what you got at Pensacon. OK, at Pensacon, I got a grail. Um, I did not think I would ever own this. Uh, the people who follow us on social media, they know what it is already because I revealed it on there. Um, I would just never willing to pay like over 150 bucks for it. But I've never seen it that cheap either. I've always seen it for like 600 to a thousand dollars. Right. That that's around the price range I've always seen. I never even heard of this mic until you brought it up one day. Which is? Which is the Darkwing Snow Globe with uh, Taurus Boba LP and Taurus Boba holding gauze. That's a really cool snow globe. Yes, man. Uh, I got it for a hundred and twenty-five dollars. Um, I personally think. This woman, she was a vendor. She knew what it was. I think she knows what it goes for. Uh, her whole table was snow globes and trading pins. That's all it was. And she said, like, she was probably, like, late 60s. I'm just throwing a random number. If that's mm -hmm. not your age, I apologize. I think... <laughs> I think she know. I think she got everything at retail. She seemed like she knew what everything was, what she was talking about, and she just probably felt I don't have time to be posting everything one by one on eBay. Right. These people here are coming to these vendors and to these cons are collectors. They're going to a good home, you know. Well, yeah, this is this one's going to its forever home. So. Oh yeah, this one's never being sold unless I, God forbid, I lose my job and can't pay my mortgage or something, you know. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Other than that, it's not going nowhere. It's staying here forever. It's oh. not. Go you won't see mine on eBay. That's a promise. <laughs> well, even if even if you did sell on eBay, you would make two or three times what what you actually spent on it. Oh yeah. But but I know you're never gonna sell it. Oh no. Nah. All right, man. So Mike, what episode are we talking about today? We are talking about star-crossed circuits. Obviously, a play on the phrase "star-crossed lovers." Okay. 
Okay, I, I'm gonna give a little spoiler, Mike, on what my mm-hmm. score might be. I'm not gonna give it my score yet. I, I this is not like a a t- top tier episode for me or anything. This is an episode that's never talked about, but I do yeah. enjoy it. it. I don't skip this one. I've always enjoyed this one. Yeah, it's not bad. It kind of gets lost in the ether of uh, ABC season two. A lot of these episodes kind of do not. They don't get talked about. Um, some are more overrated or underrated than others. This one's kind of squarely in the middle of season two. Nothing great, nothing bad. It's watchable, though. Yeah, I, I do enjoy it. Uh, it does remind me of an episode from DuckTales. Yeah, you told me Armstrong, right? Armstrong, yeah. It really reminds me of that episode. Uh, I don't know if that episode inspired it or if it was kind of recycled or it just coincidence. I, I don't know, but it, it does remind me of that episode a lot. It also reminds me a little bit of another DuckTales episode, Metal Attraction, when the robot ho- housekeeper falls in love with Gizmo Duck. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See, with DuckTales, I remember the episodes when you start describing them. I can't remember their names like that. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I, I'm not a hardcore DuckTales guy, even though I love DuckTales. Don't get but me wrong. But you know it well enough to know episode yeah. descriptions. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah, and then there's over 100 episodes, you know? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of DuckTales. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, man. Uh, and then another thing, uh, we haven't – I know I might – do you want me to jump the gun about the villain uh, quick, what, what it remind me of? Or sure, do you want to wait? go ahead. Go okay. ahead. Okay. All right, uh, for people who know me really well, I'm a hardcore retro video game collector as well. And watching this episode, it reminded me of DuckTales 2. The final boss in DuckTales 2, his name is D-1000. That's all I'm going to say. He's talking about the <laughs> NES Capcom game. Yeah, the NES Capcom game. And it's also on that um, the PlayStation Xbox uh, digital for the Disney Afternoon. The collection, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the collection is it, on there. So uh, if you play that DuckTales 2, which is not – it's not a good game. Um, no, it's nowhere as good as the original. I no. played some of it, but I never got to the end of it because I just wasn't feeling it. Yeah. But, yeah, the the final boss in that game is named Deed 1000. So we'll, we'll get into that, why I brought that up in a little bit when we get to a certain character. Of course. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> All right. So, Mike, let's get into our production air date order, man. What we got? All right. This one aired October 3rd, 1992, which, of course, was a Saturday. They're all going to be Saturdays. Um, and it was 82nd in production order, at least by numbers, at least. Um, our story editor is uh, Doug Langdale. He's going to do the majority of the remaining episodes. Anything he's not doing from here on in is going to be done by Tad. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's you know it's Tad and Doug, you know veterans of the show, going to be the story editors from here on out. Although we have some new writers this this uh, episode, um, Bill Motts and Robert Roth. Um, they're going to be doing this one and three others in ABC season two. This is their very, very first writing assignment for anything. Mm -hmm. Um, For the most part, they've been Disney television animation staff writers for 30 years. They're still active over at Disney. Um, They've done a lot of stuff for Disney. Just just naming a handful of things they've worked on. Um, Return of Jafar, the Aladdin series, Quack Pack, Lion King 2, the Hercules series, Buzz Lightyear, Kim Possible, Phineas and Ferb, the Big Hero 6 series. And they're doing a new series now for Disney called The Ghost and Molly McGee. But this Darkwing episode was their first writing job. Mm. Um, the writing is OK. Um, they wrote one of my all time favorite season two episodes that's coming up soon. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one's decent, too. OK, what do you think of their work on this one? I, I told you I, I like this one, man. I really do. This is uh, this is not an episode I skip, man. Now, I'm not gonna praise it like I do inside Binky's brain or anything. Yeah. I'm not gonna go that far. <laughs> uh, no, you but, you're never gonna hear somebody say, "Wow, have you ever seen Star Cross Circuits? That's my favorite." Nah. No, you, you're never gonna hear that. <laughs> but um, it's 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 a good episode. I feel like every character has a solid role. They, they put their footprint in the episode somewhere. You know, I, I like it, man. I do. If, if I've got one big complaint about the storytelling is mm-hmm. that the first half is trying to be a launch pad episode. And then it kind of forgets about it midway through. That, that's a fair complaint because LP to me is like the reason why I enjoyed this episode from the beginning, you know, yeah, then all that, of a sudden the episode switches gears and it doesn't yeah. become about, and then launch pads just in the crowd. And which is a shame because there are no launchpad episodes in season two. This is the closest we come. Okay. 
Yeah, 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 man. You know, I, I, I like LP in this episode. To me, he's the star of it. Um, but go, go, my bad, Mike. Go ahead, keep going. Okay, so animation-wise, we have yet another episode by Han Ho Huang Up. You told me you actually like their work in this one. Yeah, I really do, man. Uh, I like the, I like the animation on this episode. I like the way the, the drawings were done. I like the uh, facial reaction. I really love the colors. The colors are really popping on this episode. It's so vibrant. I, I would say that for mostly of season two, man, the colors are really vibrant. I think Han Ho has a – they're good with color. Mm-hmm. Their episodes have nice, bold colors, especially this season. And I think I've said it a few times, they're really good at drawing Darkwing. Their yeah. Darkwing drawings are really good. Even if other characters don't look quite right, they're kind of struggling with Honker, for example. Mm-hmm. Their Darkwings always look great. Yeah, Darkwing looks really great. Their colors are are, are vibrant. Their black are inky. The tro- uh, the contrast on the black is just, man, it's pristine. I, I, I love it, man. I was trying to argue it's because we've only seen these episodes on bootlegs until recently, but mm-hmm. you legitimately are telling me you think this looks great, and going back and looking at it, I do agree. Okay. And, and sometimes it could be, you know, I, you know, you know, like you said, watching it from bootleg, they're on standard, 4K, HD, you know, a lot of things can really make this thing pop, you know? Yeah. Or, or, or make it fail. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said with Tiffany a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. Watching these on uh, Disney Plus seems like I'm watching these for the first time, especially ABC season two, because I'm not as familiar with them as I am with the other episodes. So when I watch them on Disney Plus, it feels like I've never seen them before to some extent. Yeah. And and even if I saw it live back in the days, which I did not see season two live, but like remember watching Disney afternoon. You got to remember, I watched them on a fat back TV back then. Oh, yeah. And (laughs) And back then I didn't have cable. So I um. I, I took whatever the reception looked like back then. Yeah, so I was either watching it on a fat back TV or I was watching uh, the VHS uh, copy from uh, my cousin Ivan. So. The Ivan tapes, yeah. Yep, the Ivan tapes. <laughs> so shall we uh, start talking about the plot? All right, let's get into this plot. All right, we we see a woman. She's, she's screaming at a, a man, you know. No offense, women, but a lot of y'all do that, and we just kind of take it. <laughs> um, <But it's, laughs> right um, off the bat, we're getting um, one of our three guest voice actors in this episode. Um, right off the bat, because this soap opera actress, it turns out, um, she's being voiced by Marsha Wallace. We have to go back two years, Will, to when we first started the podcast. Remember Darkly Dawn's the Duck Part 1? Yes. How Marsha Wallace was Clovis and the orphanage um, director, Mrs. Cavanaugh. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That far back. Here, yeah, here she is on Darkwing Duck. Um, most animation fans might know her, remember her, because she has passed away mm-hmm. as Mrs. Krabappel from The Simpsons. Mm-hmm. And here she is back on Darkwing Duck as Dee Dee Lovelost. Oh, she was the, the teacher on The Simpsons? Yeah, she was Mrs. Okay. Krabappel, yeah. Okay, okay. She was on Simpsons for a good 25 some odd years until she passed away. Mike, way off subject, but I, I need to binge watch The Simpsons one day, man. I I don't you, remember anything after like maybe season five or six or you something. You need to bin, binge watch up until season eight, nine at the most. Okay. Do that and then get back to me. Okay. <laughs> <Because it's laughs> Simpsons, Simpsons is one of my all time favorite shows. I watch it religiously, at least okay. the old episodes. I don't watch the new ones. Um, but yeah, go on. Well, keep talking about what's going on with the episode. All right. We got LP and God, we got LP Goslin and a honker. They're watching this soap opera and, you know, dark wings over in the other side. He's kind of like trying to open all these crates. He's like, just so excited. He wants to play with these new, uh, shush weapons. Yeah. He does mention shush. So they're not mm-hmm. totally gone yet. Yeah. And you know, LP offers to help DW install the weapons and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they're, they're installing them on the Thunder Quack and the Rat Catcher, and there's this one crate DW forgot to open, though. Yeah, the biggest crate of all he hasn't opened. Yeah, and uh, I believe Goslin and Hunker opened it, correct? Um, well, what, he tries to open it with the crowbar, mm-hmm. and then when he just goes to tap it, the lid falls off and crushes him. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's what <laughs> happens. He tells him to go set it up on top of the computer console. Yeah, what was it named yet? Did they name it yet? Yeah, it's the D two thousand supercomputer. 
Okay, so that was the reference I was talking about with the DuckTales 2 video game with uh, the final boss being called the D-1000. So this one is called the D-2000. And wasn't Terminator uh, 2, what was it, it named, like the T-1000? The T-1000, yeah. Okay, so that might be where they got the video game reference from. It's it's possible. Yeah. It's definitely possible. And so this can control everything it control the rat catcher it can control the thunder quack it mm-hmm. can work in the hideout and remotely from his house it mm-hmm. can also program his vcr um now our younger listeners probably have no idea what a vcr is let alone <laughs> let alone how to program it yeah <laughs> remember having to do that will Oh, yeah, program it. But I used to use the heck out of some blank VHS tapes and record over the same VHS tape over and over, man. Well, that's <laughs> what I did. I would tape Darkwing Duck and then re- eventually record o- over Darkwing Duck with something else. And now I wish I hadn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, man. All so right. all this stuff can run his life. And it oh, yeah. kind of makes somebody feel a little useless. Yeah, you know, Darkwing, you know, or Drake, I'm sorry. He's sitting on the couch drinking lemon tea or something. And, and D2000 is, like, just spoiling him. She's taking care of everything. Uh, LP's getting frustrated. There, there's nothing for him to do. No, not at all. Mm-hmm. Launchpad's like, I can do this for you. I can do that for you. I can do that for you. And he, there's nothing he can do because the D2000 can do everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he wanted to, like, read a book or... You know, uh, bake, bake him a cake. Bake, bake him a cake. Uh, he wanted to put oil in the thunder quack, and he, he, there's nothing for him to do, man. T T two thousand taking care of it. Yeah, because the D two D two thousand is the giant computer in the bridge, but they have the small drones that mm-hmm. are flying all over the place doing all the chores. Yeah, but then um the the machine finally reports a crime. Yes, and we haven't mentioned yet that who is voicing the D two thousand computer. Uh, I don't know. You tell us, Mike. Victor- Victoria Carroll. It's Michael oh, Hill's wife. Oh, okay. My bad. My bad. Dang. I'm, I'm sorry for you, Cracker Jacks fans. I screwed that up. <laughs> and, this is, and this is her last role in a Darkwing Duck episode. She only had one other role, right? She was the living patch of lawn in Slime OK, You're OK, and she was Dr. Brute from Apes of Wrath. But I think you've blocked that one out. Yeah, that, yeah I'm done with that one. <laughs> yeah, we, keep, we talk about that one a lot for some reason. Yeah, um, I really quick, Mike. I as of right now of our podcast, that's still my worst episode. Still, still is, man. Oh wow. Yeah, I know dirty something is for you right now, probably. Yeah, one might, one might replace that one. Oh, okay. Woo, woo. Okay, we'll say that we'll, for another we'll day. We'll get to it. <laughs> so there is a crime. Mm-hmm. The Sitting Duck National Bank, which is a funny, funny name for a bank, the Sitting Duck National Bank, is being robbed. Yeah, by a bunch by of some, mouse. <laughs> by some new villains. Yep, the Cheese Gang. We we can't get Quacker Jack back, but we can get the freaking Cheese Gang. <laughs> <laughs> the Cheese Gang. Yeah. Um, five five mice, five rats, dressed like gangsters. Um. And and the female mouse looks a lot like Gadget from the Rescue Rangers. Mm-hmm. Did you notice that at all? Did you make that connection? Oh, yeah, because one of them clearly looked like Gadget. Yeah. <laughs> um, the leader of the Cheese Gang, the only one that talks, is voiced by a man named Jesse Cordy. Mostly live-action actor, so I'm not going to go into his resume. He's still active, born in 55. For anybody who likes animation... He's most well known as the voice of LeFou from Beauty and the Beast. Okay. Which came out the year before. He also did some voices on Bonkers and Gargoyles. Um, he's going to be Cement Head in Mutancy on the Bouncy a few episodes from now. Okay. Uh, but here he's just, he does another character later on, but he's the leader of the Cheese Gang. And they get their name by squirting their victims with guns loaded with liquid cheese. Yeah, they, uh, LP was a victim of that. Yeah, Darkwing comes in and gets his one entrance. I am the check that overdraws your account. I hate when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> and so what happens, Will? Yeah, they shoot LP with the cheese, and um, the, but uh, D2000 captures them. Yeah, Darkwing gets in some kicks, but the D2000 D- D- does capture them. But they're working mm-hmm. pretty well together so far. Everything yeah, is so, cool. Well, except for LP. With Darkwing, it's going cool, but not for yeah. LP. Launchpad feels useless. 
Yeah. But, and you Goslin's know, just mad. Oh, yeah, 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 man. And, and, well, you, before we get into Goslin, uh, I, I just wanted to mention uh, this one part, Mike. Uh, when uh, the D2000 captures um, uh, the cheese gang, it, it feels like Darkwing's about to give LP some love, but he, he kind of gives the, the credit of the sidekick to, to D2000. Oh, that that was really low. Yeah, man. That's when LP really feels useless. Like, he's just not feeling the love. And Launchpad verbalizes it to Darkwing. And Darkwing's like, you can do lots of things. Yeah. Nah, she can do that, too. Uh, the one thing Darkwing thinks that Launchpad can do that the, the computer can't is, sh- is sing show tunes. <laughs> That's but so La- Launchpad goes to sing and he goes, oh, please, you know I hate it when you sing. Yeah. <laughs> But then, uh, you know, we're, we're back at Drake's house, but Drake's not there. It's just Goslin, and uh, she's trying to do prank calls. Yeah, someone thinks she's Bart Simpson. <laughs> or the making prank prank, yankers. Making <laughs> prank phone calls, but a D2000 shows up and stops her. Yeah, man, she snitched on Goslin bad, man. She does snitch, and she shows Drake all, like, footage of all of the things Goslin's done, including slice open the wall with a chainsaw. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> that's yeah, that, that's and try and her and Honker were trying to shove an alligator into the house. For everybody I've ever snitched on in my life, I apologize. There's not too many of y'all. I've never really been a snitch, but this is like snitching to a whole different level. And boy, does she <laughs> ever get grounded? Oh yeah, she gets grounded for 50 years. <laughs> and Honker makes a comment that um the D2000 is really good at singing show tunes, so that yeah. that that hurts. Poor Launchpad. Yeah, but then the D2000 informs Drake of another crime uh, being committed right now. Yeah, so um, Darkwing decides to go on his own. He leaves Launchpad home. Yeah, LP was ready to roll, man. Oh, man, Darkwing did LP so dirty here, man. And when he leaves, Launchpad just decides he's done. He's going to consider quitting. Yeah. Like I said, this is like a Launchpad episode. Like the first act or so is like, this is a Launchpad show Mm -hmm. for now. Yeah. So Darkwing goes with D2000, you know, to this uh to this crime. I believe it was a robbery or something. And who do we see again? The Cheese Gang, but they're already apprehended a second time. Darkwing doesn't even have to do anything. D2000's yeah. already got them. Yeah. He he's a little frustrated, but you know, he's still he's still keeping his cool because uh D2000 tells him about another robbery that's happening at a department store. By the time they get there, mm-hmm. she stopped the crook again. Yep. Now he's starting to get mad. Oh, yeah. Now he's really fi- starting to feel it. And, you know, Hon- Honka and Goslin, they're trying to cheer up LP. Not working. He's yeah. really depressed. He won't even take a cuckoo cola. Yeah. But then uh, they come up with the idea to, hey, let's reprogram D2000. They have to do it because, as Goslin said, this computer is depressing the heck out of Launchpad. Yeah. <laughs> One of those lines that I've always remembered from the episode. I think it's my favorite line. Um. So I want you to, I want, I don't know if you noticed this. The main D2000 computer has like the head on the top where you see its lips as it talks. Mm -hmm. But the reel-to-reel film on the front, the two round ones in the front of the computer, I swear, I think those are supposed to be breasts. Really? I didn't even think of it like that, but I can see that. It's very subliminal. But I swear, I think they tried to get away with something and got away with it. (laughs) <laughs> all right mike don't ruin it man <laughs> they've done the same joke on futurama i'm shocked they got away with it here but i won't ruin it because <laughs> maybe they'll put the disclaimers in front of this episode too um so anyway so the idea is honker's gonna reprogram it mm-hmm. darping enters ram ranting angry and the d2000 doesn't understand why he's so mad because she doesn't get emotions mm-hmm. so goslin decides you know what Emotions, you know, why don't you watch the soap opera? You'll watch what emotions are. And she, her idea is to distract the computer long enough for Honker to reprogram it. Yeah. What, what was the name of the show again? The Young and... Young and the Brainless. Young and the Brainless. Obviously, okay. The Young and the Restless was a soap opera. I don't know if it still exists. My sister watched a lot of soap operas. I'm always shocked when I remember that those things still exist these days. I thought they were all gone, but they're still around. I think you I think people remember when they have a day off from work and they're just watching TV and then you hit around at lunchtime and you can't find nothing to watch and there's like nothing but soap operas on every channel. That's when you kind of remember, oh, my God, I, you know, soap operas still exist. <laughs> I don't even have actual TV anymore with me. It's all streaming. So 
I don't even have that option. Yeah. So as Honker's trying to reprogram this computer, DW enters, ranting still. He he punches the console and spills the can of Coca-Cola all over the machine. Gets shocked. Mm-hmm. Blacks Causes out the blackout. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like when he wakes up. He's got light coming out of his eyeballs and his mouth. Yeah, <laughs> that was a cool, pretty cool animation there. Because as he's talking, the light's like going off and on. Yeah, but somebody's person has a personality now, and it's changed. Yeah, now the computer thinks she's Dee Dee Love Lost from the TV show. <laughs> and falls in love with DW. She won't leave him alone. She's hugging him. I Just like in the last episode I had mentioned to Bill, sometimes Jim Cummings can do so much with one syllable. Mm-hmm. One of the robot drones grabs him and holds him like over the bridge and like says, you either hug me or your only option is to jump a thousand feet off the bridge. Darkwing looks to the water and goes, well, <laughs> <laughs> and then jumps, off, then jumps off the bridge. <laughs> Jim can do so much with one syllable. He makes it so funny. Yeah. So, you know, Dee Dee's falling in love with Darkwing. Um, it, her voice to me changes here, but you said it was the same voice actress, right? Yeah, because now it's less robotic and more soap opera a lot more lovelorn, a lot more throaty, a lot more in love, basically. It's the same actress, but she's performing the voice differently. Yeah, and, and Darkwing demands Honker, you know, to explain what happened. And I, I love it because it, it reminds me of a, a Brush with Oblivion because he tells oh, yeah. Honker to spit it out. <laughs> yeah, the Honker spit it out thing, which they've done a whole bunch of times. Or This is might be the fifth or sixth time they've done that joke. Yeah. So we cut to the next morning. He's in bed at home as Darkwing. He's still wearing the mask. He must have been exhausted. Mm-hmm. Um, the drones wake him up with breakfast, a whole breakfast spread. And then when he goes downstairs, they're, like, trying to force his outfit on him. All his ties, all his clothing. They dress him all crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Launchpad's just watching. He's so done. He's sitting on the easy chair just watching all the nonsense unfold. Yeah. Poor Launchpad. Because, like, Dee Dee's just, like, she's so in love with him. She has his ties and all that stuff ready, but, like, nothing for uh, for LP. But DW is like, you know what, LP? Let's go fight some crime. Me and you. We don't need the D2000. Yeah. I noticed, you know, the anima- I noticed an animation mistake. I don't know if you caught it. When Darkwing punches the statue, the entire statue drops into the table, and all you see is its head. Oh, no. I didn't catch that. You know how usually just the head goes down into the statue's shoulders, and that's it? Yeah. When he punches it, the whole statue goes into the table, and you only see the head sticking up. Oh, I didn't. I didn't catch that, man. I missed that one. Um. So Darkwing and Launchpad trying to fight some crime, but the D2000 doesn't want them getting hurt. Doesn't want Darkwing getting hurt. Yeah, she don't care about LP. <laughs> no, and she tries to control the Rat Catcher and throws them off of it. Yeah. So they're not, they're no longer en route to the crime. No. And Darkwing's finally he's had it. He's lost it, and he's done. Mm-hmm. Um, when he catches up to the rat catcher, though, he tears the monitor right off of the front of the console and he screams at it that he's going right back to the bridge and he's disconnecting it. He's oh, yeah. done. Stay out of my way. I've had it. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, he takes off running and he's he's exhausted, man. He runs into a, uh, an actual crime, though, as he stopped when he was trying to catch his breath. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, remember, Dee Dee stopped D.W. from the capturing the crook and she oh. captures him. It's that little duck thief yep. from one yeah, of the other little... episodes. I think this this thief was on Let's Get Respectable. He's one of Negaduck's goons. Yeah. I remember he comes out, Dee Dee stops him, and Darkwing. Mm-hmm. That's what really boils Darkwing over. That's yeah, when that... he finally loses his temper. Yeah, and that's when he threatened to unplug her. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So then we get uh, Goslin and Honker. You know, they, they warn Darkwing when he gets home, uh, or Drake, because he, he was dressed as Drake when he got home. About and how whistling, and whistling the Darkwing theme song. Yeah, he sure was. <laughs> and uh, they warn him about how upset Dee Dee is. But he blows them off, goes into the house, mm-hmm. gets attacked by a vacuum cleaner. He gets stripped. <laughs> he gets stripped down to his boxers and tank top. Remember what I said a long time ago. Whenever he gets stripped down, he wears a tank top and boxer shorts with hearts. <laughs> Still wearing that. Yeah. They try to give him a hot bath and a painful massage. 
Yeah, with one of those pizza rollers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he runs back outside, and when he changes in the dark wing, he spins, and all the hearts in his underwear go flying off. Yeah. You, you but, did see that, right? The yeah, little hearts flying everywhere? Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of funny, too, because the first thing he does is he takes credit for, uh, you know, saying that Didi was going to be a problem. Yeah, when everybody else told him that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but she swoops him up with a thunderquack. Yeah, because Darkwing said, you know, we'll just sneak to the bridge. We'll unplug her. This should be easy. But he forgot. Yeah, she's in control of the thunderquack and the rat catcher. Yeah, but he 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 jumps off the thunderquack all the way up in the sky. <laughs> yeah, because he shoots an inflatable cushion pellet out of the gas gun. It mm. inflates, but he misses the cushion and hits the cement. <laughs> and uh, he comes out and he goes, "Here's to you, Mrs. Robinson," which of course is the song, Mrs. Yeah. Robinson. He's singing the lyrics. Yeah, but then you know, Darkwing faces uh, faces some uh, some problems, some criminal problems. Oh, he is so screwed. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, a police officer shows up with an arrest warrant for crimes of the heart um i think this policeman's voiced by jesse cordy i can hear it in the voice Mm -hmm. then another guy shows up with six million in unpaid mallard charge bills Mm -hmm. i think this guy's voiced by terry i can kind of hear it can you yeah it definitely sounded like terry to me and then a woman shows up from the video store He's claiming he's taken out six billion videotapes and hasn't returned them. Uh, (laughs) This is another Marsha Wallace voice. Okay. You could tell it's her right away. Well, remember VHS rental stores? Yes. Yeah. Blockbuster and Video Warehouse. Yeah. Movie Gallery. (laughs) Hollywood Video. Oh, yeah. Um, Hollywood Video. Yeah. That just – that seems like a lifetime ago. Yeah. I look at all my DVDs, I look at my streaming services, and it just, the idea of going to a store and renting a tape seems so alien now, you know? Yeah, and I remember the little sticker, uh, please be kind and rewind. But, and back <laughs> then, you'd go to a Blockbuster on a Friday, you'd have a three-day rental, and it's like you had the, the weekend to watch it, then you had to return it, or yeah. you get charged late fees. Or you'd mm-hmm. go for a brand new movie that have a whole wall of them, but all of them would be out. Yeah, if I re- I remember for me as a kid, it was more for me. It was more about renting the video games. Yes. My dad, yeah, my dad would rent like three or four movies, but he would let me and my brother pick one, and he would get the other movies. But the main thing me and my brother focused on were, were the video games. Yes, um, especially in the NES years for me, the NES and Super yeah. NES, we rented a lot. Most of those games that I played were from rentals. I didn't own a lot, but I rented a ton. Yeah, yeah, I remember you were lucky if you had the manual in there, but most of the time the manual of the game was not in there. You were just – that first couple of hours, you were just pretty much screwed and just trying to learn the game yourself, you know? And you couldn't go online to find out. Nah. Or, Unless you uh, owned a strategy guide or something, you were out of luck. Yeah. <laughs> so Darkwing's on the run and says to Goslin, Honker, and Launch, but does anybody know a good lawyer? <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, she screwed his uh, computer records bad, really bad. Yeah, and then the rat catcher shows up with the uh, the waffle launcher. They had mm-hmm. added that at the beginning of the episode, and when he sees it, he goes, not the waffles. <laughs> <laughs> now, my, uh, one, of, one of my favorite animation scenes, well, probably my favorite animation scene of this episode is in this scene. It's when they ran into the alley. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I really like that scene when his heart is pumping out and stuff. I love the drawings. I love how the coloring, I love the shadows. Uh, I love the darkening of the, of the alley. And then like there's like four windows that light up behind Darkwing. I, I love that scene, man. It looked I, really crisp. I just love the visuals of Darkwing, Launchpad, Goslin, and Honker all running together. Yeah, like, that is We cool. haven't seen that in so long. Like That was like an iconic visual from that sinking feeling, the four of them running from the Moliarty army. Mm-hmm. And you, like you see, like the original production arts of Darkwing Duck shows the, th- the four of them running. It's like this is the last time we're gonna see that. Yeah. Because in the next episode, which is the last Honker episode, he has two broken legs. Mm-hmm. So, so this is the last time you see the four of them like running away from something. So it's yeah. almost almost to the end of an era here with Darkwing Duck. Um, but as they're running, the Thunderquack basically eats them <laughs> and flies yeah. them back to the bridge. Mm-hmm. 
And everybody finally realizes that the computer is acting like Dee Dee Love Lost. They hadn't put it together, but now they get it. Like who they realize who she's acting like. And this is, I think, my favorite part of the episode when they have to act like the soap opera in order to distract her. Yeah, so LP this, begins acting as Lucas. <laughs> this could have been longer because it's really funny. Yeah. So, yes, Launchpad arrives as Lucas. Mm -hmm. He's returning for Dee Dee's love. And when she's like, I thought you ran a, I thought you ran off with such and such, Launchpad goes, uh, she couldn't cook. Because <laughs> <laughs> he loves to eat, so... <laughs> and he's wearing, um, you know, he's wearing a full suit. He has his hair slicked back. In this one, he has a full head of hair. The last episode, he was bald again. Um, <laughs> so Goslin comes in as Lucinda, surviving mm -hmm. a tragic blimp accident because yeah. Darkwing saved her. And yeah, then so my that... favorite, my favorite part. Well, sorry to interrupt. The no, episode, no, I, I get... think this is my favorite part. Honker goes to shut the switch off, but Dee Dee grabs Honker and calls him Spencer. And when she calls him Spencer, Darkwing looks at him and goes, Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> and then she says it again. And he looks at him and goes, Spencer. What it reminds me of is an old Bugs Bunny cartoon. I believe it's called Bewitched Bunny, which is a parody of Hansel and Gretel. Mm -hmm. And whenever someone says Hansel, Bugs goes, Hansel? Hansel? <laughs> And this is exactly what this reminded me of. Just Darkwing going, Spencer, is just so great. What happens next? Uh, I believe she throws Darkwing Honker out the window, and but uh, LP catches them. And when they fly back into the room, Darkwing hits the computer and switches it off with his cape. Yeah, his cape pulls the switch down, and then... Uh... Darkwing finally confesses he needed LP's help, and, you know, like, Dee Dee's just destroyed, you know? Yeah, Launchpad did get some closure in the episode. I like I said, I wish it was more about him, but at least they have forgotten he was important to the story. So Darkwing does say, you know, I needed you, which yeah. is a nice way to close it out. Mm -hmm. And then for some reason, you think he wouldn't be feeling this way. He walks over to the computer and he's like, oh, you know, she wasn't so bad. <laughs> and yeah, then right. the whole then the whole computer falls on him. <laughs> and that's it. That yeah. Star Cross Circuits, which, you know, it's fun. It has its moments. Um, elements of it are weird. I mean, the Cheese Gang. Mm -hmm. Really, where those guys come from. Um, but it's fun. I, I like that we have all these guest voices in it, especially Marsha Wallace. It's nice to hear her again. Um, great having Honker back. We only have three episodes with him in season two. So it's always good to have him. Mm -hmm. Um. I like this one. It isn't one of my favorites. It's like square. It's a straight average. I'm going to give it a two and a half. Well, two and a half. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go just a slightly higher, just a little bit. I'm going to go three. I'm going to give it a what three. And uh, same reasons why you like it. Uh, LP honker. It's hilarious. It, it's fun. Um, but the animation for me gives it just a little bit of a boost, man. I, I love the animation on this episode, Mike. You know, Bill, Bill said something last week that he sees these earlier episodes, the animation's actually still trying. Mm -hmm. And he pointed out that the later ones in ABC season two aren't getting the TLC that these are getting. Mm -hmm. I can see that. When I watch these earlier ones, the animation looks like it's actually trying. And I don't think that's true for the later ones. The mm -hmm. ones I really have an issue with are coming later. I think part of it's the animation isn't as good. But okay. in this one, you're right. The okay. animation is actually trying. It's it's fine. I, I do enjoy that. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, I'm going to give it a three. Um, mm -hmm. uh, are we going to rate um, D2000? Hey, she's a villain, technically, right? She's an antagonist. She gets in his way, so we might as well. Okay. You go uh, first on that one. I will give her... I'm gonna go with two. She she's okay. She's good for one episode. You know she holds her ground. Uh, you know basically she's very powerful except for just the switch. Uh, that's kind of the downfall that she's computerized. Uh, right. I do like that this episode is aged well with technology. You know. 
Yeah, because we are in the age now where you can do anything with your smartphone. You can mm -hmm. lock your house. You can start your car. You can do anything with a smartphone. Mm -hmm. And the idea of technology controlling your life and making you miserable is an actual relevant thing that could happen to us. Mm -hmm. More so now than in 1992. So the episode still holds up. Outside of the soap operas and VCR stuff, which is a little dated, Mm -hmm. The episode still holds up in its themes and its story. Mm -hmm. I will give it that. They could totally redo this episode and make the drone. And you still have drones. You can have drones doing the same thing the D2000 is doing. Because now we actually have drones. It's something we have now. Yeah. So you could do that. Okay. So did, did you score her? Not yeah. I'm going to give her a two as well. Okay, they so could have done like to... even more. They could have like have her like totally go crazy and try to take over Saint Canard the same way the Armstrong episode of Ducktales did. Yeah. But maybe they didn't want to go over the same subject matter. She could have like totally lost her mind. But she's only fixated on Darkwing Duck. I mean, yeah. on the Ducktales episode with the with the robot maid, she threatens to blow up the money bin. They mm -hmm. could have gone really big with this. But they kept it a smaller story that's really more personable with Darkwing. And that's fine. They're not, like, going over old stories. But I'll give mm -hmm. her a two because when it ends, you don't always remember her. But she's enjoyable when you're watching it. Okay. All right. So that wraps up this episode. Uh, Mike, what episode we got coming up next? Okay, we got a big one coming up next. We have what I think is the best episode of this season. Um, it's Steerminator, The Return of Taurus Bulba. Mm-hmm. Is this your favorite episode of season two, or you, it's you don't want to? It's not my favorite, but I think it's the best. Okay. Okay. And we may have a guest on this one, but like mm -hmm. we always do, we don't drop names because you never know what life throws at you. Yeah. All right. So, Mike, uh, for the people who are listening to us for the first time, where can they find us? Everywhere: Stitcher, Spotify, Google, iTunes, YouTube. Pandora, iHeartRadio, Pocket Cast, Radio Public. We are on every podcast app you could imagine. We are very lucky because it's so easy to find us. Mm -hmm. And, Will, do you have any shout-outs tonight? Uh, the only shout-out I'm going to give is to anybody who went to Pensacon, man. Uh, you know, like, it was uh, safe. It was fun. There was no incidents. You know, people respected people's space and stuff. It was it was well-organized. I, I, I enjoyed myself. Uh, guys, the world seems, at least here in the U.S., is opening back up. Uh, yeah. I can't, I can't tell you what to do. Just be safe out there. You know, uh, be cautious. I can't tell you to wear a mask. You know, it's totally up to you. I don't know if the mask works. I don't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get into that debate. I've heard people say the mask don't work. Some people say it does. You know, just use your best judgment and be safe. That's all I'm gonna say. And get vaccinated if that's what you want to do. It's a, it's a smart option. Yeah, man. And shout, and shout out to my Knicks, man. I'm glad we made the playoffs. We got to get some wins, though. We got to beat the Hawks, man. Uh, <laughs> for, for all of, like, the 1% of our listening audience who even <laughs> cares about sports. I mean, sports <laughs> are important. People love sports. But I guarantee most people listening <laughs> only care about cartoon ducks. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know I'm a sports we, we love you. So. Yeah, we love you guys listening, though. We do we love you guys. But, you know, Will loves his sports. You know, oh, it's yeah. his thing. All right, so that's going to wrap up this episode, everybody. You know, Mike, I'm glad to be back, and uh, let's knock out this big one we got next week, all right? Absolutely. All right, everybody, good night, and stay dangerous. Have a nice day. <laughs>